Hey everybody, good morning. My name is Pete. Thank you so much for joining me today for this new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's uh, kind of obvious, but maybe not so obvious if you're kind of new to people are getting involved for the first time, and, and deservedly so. There's, there's quite a bit of volatility. There's a lot of exciting price action going on. But we have, we're going to separate day trading from swing trading, and not so much from a strategic perspective, but a tiny, tiny, very quick decision that you could make that keeps you in the right stocks for day trading and keeps you out of the stocks that you literally have very little chance of making money on a day in and day out basis. So when we talk about day trading, we want to specifically talk about we're looking to buy the stock and exit the stock all within that same period of time. So within that same Monday or we're getting in on Tuesday and getting out on the same day, right? Um, by the way, if you find these videos helpful, definitely click down and subscribe. We do two videos every day. One is educational and one is stock picks. Uh, you'll get updates uh, once you subscribe to the channel. So what I'm going to show you right now is something that's very easy to spot, something you probably noticed but absolutely didn't notice it from a trading perspective to set up your uh, which stocks actually go into your watch list. So from a day-to-day -day perspective, your watch list is the group of stocks that you go into the market saying, these are the stocks that I want to buy, these are the stocks that I want to day trade. And if you're a regular subscriber to the channel, you know that a uh, big part of my strategy is built around two things, order flow and tape reading. And tape reading is really where the active stocks produce that money on a daily basis. And by the way, congratulations to everybody who's in the boot camp. Uh, and our tape reading room yesterday, we, we exercised incredible, incredible professional trading yesterday morning, the first 90 minutes of the day, which is normally the most volatile uh, and easy to trade, uh, was kind of choppy yesterday. And we kept saying, work the orders, be patient, work the orders, be patient. And you were paid because right in the middle of the day, a time of day when the market really doesn't rally that much, we actually started a four hour rally into the back half of the day. And were paid nicely uh, on a day that otherwise was lighter volume. So the point that I'm making here is that if you follow and understand what I'm about to show you, trading actually becomes easier because now you're not stuck in trade saying, I don't understand why is the market moving? My stock's not doing anything. The SPY, the NASDAQ, the Dow, they're all flying in one direction and my stock is sitting here stuck in the mud. Or certainly like I, I used to do, uh, I, I used to feel like I'm the only person in a stock that's not moving. You have four stocks on your list and you seem to pick the one that doesn't move. We're going to fix that today. Now, we're not getting into deeper conversations about strategy. If you want to do that, definitely click down and learn about the boot camp. It's, it's a really small investment. We get to trade together live in real time for 30 days. You actually get to see my entries, my exits, uh, and be a part of the community and have real time lessons all day. Um, but what I'm going to show you now is how you can quickly look at a chart. And if you're a day trader, which a lot of people are right now because we're all home quarantined and looking for something to do, right? Uh, I'm going to show you how to spot instantly when the smart money is active in stocks on a regular basis. So if you think about what we're looking to do as day traders, especially, we're looking for stocks that on a day in and day out basis have activity and volume. So I want you to write this down on a consistent basis, my criteria, and this is my criteria, you might have different criteria, but after 20 years, this is what I use. I only trade stocks, and specifically day trading, that have a minimum of 2 million shares average per day. So if you look in whatever charting platform you have, it, you could use Finviz, which is a very simple one, or Yahoo Finance, whatever it is. You can look up the average volume for that stock. And I think most software is default to, to the last 30 days. Not really super important, but an average of 2 million. Now, the reason I want 2 million average for day trading specifically, number one is I like to trade size, and trading size is a lot easier uh, both to get in and out of trades uh, when there's a lot of uh, shares being traded every day, and just as importantly, liquidity. Liquidity means a lot of shares being advertised to buy and advertised to sell, which should help me get in and out of trades at a relatively secure place that I feel comfortable with. So if I'm trading size in a position, or even if you're not, there's usually a lot of people uh, at each price level. So if you say, I want to get out there, or I want to get in there, there's a good chance of getting in or out there. There's a lot of brokerages um, and illiquid stocks that you might not even recognize. And you'll notice it now because you look at it, 
where you, you think you're getting in and out, you're marketing in and out of a stock, uh, but it's not that liquid and it might cost you an extra 25 cents on that fill because you marketed out and the stock wasn't liquid uh, and you think you made a good trade, but a thousand shares and you missed 25 cents, that's $250 you just cost yourself just because you're trading stocks that aren't liquid. Now, the other side of that, those stocks move much quicker. I get that, but you want to be able to manage, you want to be able to go into a trade so I know exactly where I want to get out and there's a good chance I can get at it. But there's just another important part of that is the more consistent, and what I mean by that, by the average volume, the more consistent that the smart money is involved in a stock, the more consistent institutions are involved in a stock on a day in and day out basis, that creates opportunity, which brings the second piece of my criteria. So the first one's average 2 million shares per day. The second one is a minimum average true range of $1.50. So what that means is the average from the low to the high on a daily basis is a minimum of $1.50. Now, obviously, if you set a minimum of $1.50, it could go much higher than that. That's just the minimum, but that's the opportunity. So that means that each day those stocks have a really good chance of moving enough as a day trade or as a swing trade to justify accepting risk in those stocks because the profit potential is there, again, on a day in and day out basis. So an average of 2 million shares per day and a minimum average true range of $1.50. So that balances opportunity with liquidity and the smart money activity. So you get kind of the best of both worlds there. But now there's one last piece that I want to give you, which is you could like that, even if a stock meets the criteria, like that, tell whether or not it's a day trading stock versus a swing trading stock. And I point this out in our game plan meeting every single day, because that's a big part of our meetings. Before the market opens, everybody has an opportunity to call out the trades that they're looking at. I give everybody an idea of what I'm looking at. And then I'll say about that stock, hmm, the stock is a good idea Technically set up well, reading the tape set up well, but that's not a stock I would day trade. And I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So let's go over to the chart. And what I mean by that is there's not enough consistency from one day to the next, even if it meets the criteria. So you got to take that one last step to really understand reading the tape. And I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So I'm going to take a look at two stocks just to keep it simple. We don't need to go through thousands and thousands of stocks. So what we're looking at right now is Best Buy <clears throat> and a stock that meets the criteria that I would consider day trading it. But here's the point that I want to point out. You'll notice on the chart here, and I'm just going to use this little window right here, large green candlesticks or large red candlesticks in my course, the order flow masterclass, I teach you that those are known as energy candlesticks. That's where we make money. The more consistent that you see energy candlesticks, whether it's large red or large green, and especially if they become well bid or well offered, there's opportunity there. There's consistent money to be made there. They're easier to trade, easier to read because there's consistent price action and volume. The other side of the equation is what I call melted candlesticks. And you can see here in Best Buy, there's one, two, three, four of them in a row. There's a fifth one, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's a lot of melted candlesticks. Melted candlesticks means from one day to the next, and oh, you see them once in a while, but when you see them with consistency on your chart, that means that the smart money, the institutional money is not active in that stock on a day in and day out basis, despite the fact that they meet the volume and the average true range criteria. So if you really wanna be a good day trader, you gotta go past just the criteria, and this is really what it takes. Take a quick look at the chart and say, is there enough energy candlesticks there for me to, justify staring at this stock the entire day to make money every single day. You will find these stocks that have melted candles, melted candles, melted candles. You get gray hair, pull your hair out of your head saying, the market's moving, why isn't my stock moving? That's why you're choosing to trade stocks, you're choosing to be in stocks that don't have enough energy from one day to the next. And remember that energy is where the money is. That means that they're bidding up or lowering their offer in these stocks and a day in and day out basis, they're easier to trade. So Best Buy does not meet that criteria, even though it meets the volume in the average true range. Then maybe we'll take a look at a stock, let's say like uh, Lulu is actually a good example. You can see here very quickly in Lulu and the price of the stock doesn't matter. You just need to practice it on your own. 
you can clearly see that there is a lot more red and green that's obvious on a day in and day out basis. So we can continue to look through some of these stocks. So for example, Goldman Sachs, and by the way, this is also a way to tell uh, if your stock is in play versus if it's not in play. Now today we're not getting into order flow, we're not getting into tape reading, but just as simple as this, this is one, two, this is probably a 10 day period here where Goldman Sachs was an absolute mess and very hard to trade. But now you can see over here, despite the fact that order flow is not obvious, bam, like that, you can tell, wow, this stock has a lot of energy and those would have been days to identify tradable opportunities. So it's very interesting that uh, even if you pull strategy out of the equation, we kind of went past strategy here and just before you even look at uh, putting that stock in your watch list as a day trade, there's certain types of stocks and even Best Buy that meet the criteria but don't have consistent energy and that energy in large green candlesticks and large red candlesticks on a day in and day out basis, that's where the easier money is assuming that you put together order flow and reading the tape. Now, I wanna make it clear, you can still swing trade those stocks comfortably because they have the everyday average true range and they have the everyday volume uh, where there's liquidity and activity on those stocks. It's just not a stock that I would day trade. So hopefully you can take this information right now and be able to spot a stock right away, which is why a lot of people trade Apple or Tesla or those kind of stocks, Netflix, because on, an, on a regular basis, there's a lot of energy candlesticks in there. Now, here's where it gets really exciting. When you start to see energy candlesticks, that's big green, followed by another big green, followed by, those are the days you should be printing money. Those are the days that more money is available. We actually talked about this yesterday in our group coaching call that we have every Monday night. There's certain days that you should be making more. It's not your losing trades that should be driving you crazy. Those are a part of the business. It's the winning days that you need to learn how to master where if there's $5,000 out there, if there's an energy day out there, you got to go and get it. And then all those small losses don't matter anymore. Hopefully you can take this into the market today and very quickly identify stocks you should or shouldn't have in your list uh, and then just go in there and make it happen. Have a great day, everybody.